YouTube. I'm Chris, the Country Cottage Gardener. Welcome back to a quick little video. I thought I'd just take the opportunity because I didn't put anything out last week. I had had a few other things on my mind at the moment, but I apologise about that. But anyway, I thought I'd just do a quick video on something that actually came up in oh, it was a video a long time ago. I can't remember. It was over a year ago. But it's something I've been meaning to do. But anyway, there's a, a track down to this customer which I come to weekly and I'm just literally streaming all of the um, cow parsley alongside because it's quite a narrow track. I'll swing around and show you in a second. I also cut all these hedges by hand as well. The whole track is probably about a quarter of a mile. But I thought I'd just do a very quick video for anybody who wants to know how to load a um, streamline trimmer. Now I'm using my Husqvarna it's a 143R brush cutter, uh, so the bullhorn one. But the, all the heads for the, the Husqvarna range are pretty much similar. This head I've got on here is slightly smaller out of the two, because I've got two, but the, the spring needs slightly adjusting on the other one, so I've got to just watch in some, I mean, a quite long bit of grass and some um, grasshoppers bouncing around. Anyway, let's swing the camera around. And we'll have a brief chat about the right. Uh, so here we are. How we We've it got okay. the head. Now these are very simple. These heads, um, and they they are what they would describe as um, self-loading or um, bounce heads, that sort of thing. But basically, you've got a spring in behind this blue button. When you tap it on the ground, this auto feed happens. It takes the pressure off of the 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 cable. The um, string line and releases a little bit I don't have the um, extra guard that goes on here on my on my brush cutter and basically there's another fin that goes underneath and has a trimmer on it which keeps the the line shorter I don't have that on there um, I took it off for when I had a Oregon mulching blade anyway back to the matter hand so these, you, you find the pressure points in each side, give them a good squeeze, off. Come, the cover comes off nice and easy. Nice and easy. Now the thing to bear in mind when you take that off is which way. You just want to note which way it goes back on. So when you're looking at this, that's the top, so that's the face. And you'll see a groove there. If you flip it over and it says wind cord. So what we're going to be doing is doing a double wind. So we're going to be loading both sides to the top and bottom of this coil at the same time. Now, I've used so many different types of trim line over the years, absolutely loads of different ones, from expensive steel products um, all the way through to this handy one I've used. Um, buy one as well which is like a tr uh, four triple cut line and to be honest yeah I keep going back to this it's cost effective it certainly does the job and I'm more than happy with it now it <laughs> shamefully it took me a few years to realize but there is a little hole on the back of these packets and I've noticed it on most of them so <laughs> do yourself a little favor pull it through that hole, it saves everything untwangling inside that packet. Right, so and just poke it through. Cut anyway, line. let's measure out our line. And I roughly do about four meters. So I know from the tip of my hand to my shoulder it's roughly four meters. One, two, three, four. It can easily be cut off with a pair of your secateurs. And then what I do is I get both, both ends together so like so go back to the other end where the loop is and we get this bit and we find where it's going away from us and hook it on and then I literally feed both on I don't like overfilling them it um, I'd much rather do a meter less and refill a little bit more often and uh, rather than have issues with it bump feeding and then you've gone all the way around, you can hook one onto that little hole there. And then we, holding the finger over it, go back, hook it over the other bit. And that's 
that's secure for the moment, but we take our end cap, we marry up the eye holes where the streamline exit, and we'll pull it back out of those safety hoops and down those holes. And then we've got enough to put it onto the streamer head. Nice and simple. So we line up, let's put it on the streamer then. Those grooves, on. That's simply it. That one's a good length. That one's going to need a trim off. Now you'd have the option of if you had the trim guard on there, it would uh, it would snap it off. But to be honest, just a pair of second tears, which I've always got on me anyway. And that's it. That's as simple as it takes. Now I've used a lot of systems over the years with different trimmers. And this Husqvarna one is by far the easiest. I say, I have got the other head as well. Um, to take these off is so simple as well, because we've got a little noggin down there, and then you turn it around, and then there's a a hole which is, sits into the gear boxing back there, and basically it just locks central, and then you can twist this the other way, anti-clockwise, and um, it basically puts pressure on there so you can undo the head. So if you're in a real rush and you didn't want to keep loading up, you could have a couple of heads and it's easier just to change the heads out quicker than to keep loading the uh, the trim line on there. But anyway, if you're interested, stick around and I will put a little bit of action up working my way along there. Great fun. Oh, what a gorgeous day. <laughs> of a mile in 15 minutes now the whole track is about a mile long but I only do this trimming now I'll try and get a video of these hedges um, when I come round to it but if anyone's wondering why uh, I'm eating half the hedge why I'm, why I'm actually trimming this now apart from it all coming in and we get a lot of ramblers coming through here and such is this area is rife for um, horse flies if you're not familiar with horse flies, the sting on them is horrendous. So I'd much rather try and catch this, even if it's three weeks, four weeks earlier, and get it done. Um, because the horse flies are immense, and they really do go to the sting. You know, they go for your sweat, the horse flies. They're horrible, horrible creatures. Way surpass um, wasps in my, in my estimation. Um, but when they do start to come out, I'm going to show you a little something we made some years ago. To, to capture the horse flies so if you're interested in that then there's a reason to subscribe for the future anyway quick little video hope you enjoyed that we'll catch up with something a little bit more structured soon so thank you very much like subscribe and all that great stuff and whatever anyway cheesy green big smile don't forget to comment and yeah, great bye